While building a structure in Minecraft can seem hard, you can use just five steps to make anything. A lot of people have trouble building structures, especially more complex ones, and many times they can seem confused or garbled. Because of this, many people stick to either making builds off reference images or using a tutorial, but this can limit your builds. However, building any structure can be broken down into five easy steps that you, or anyone else, can follow. So make sure to watch to the end of this video, and you'll be able to build stunning and complex structures with ease. The first step is to plan out the overall look of your structure. Ideally, you would have a specific structure or style in mind. For example, for this build, you are going for more of a rustic look. At this stage, it can be useful to plan out the atmosphere of a build. You know you want this build to feel secluded, safe, and comfy. You want it to be surrounded by nature and feel disconnected from the rest of the world. Then, you decide the rough scale. You want it to be relatively small, but not uncomfortably so. Since you have decided on a rustic style, you might do some research on rustic houses or cabins. You could even go somewhere and take pictures yourself, or just find some online. In this regard, it can be useful to create a whole document full of reference images. While you're looking at these references, you're going to take careful note of the different colors and patterns you see, and aim to use them in your build. Next, you need to start planning every part of your build. Start with a simple block palette. Find four or five good colors to use, and lay them out on the ground. Now there are two things to bear in mind when creating a color palette. Reference images and contrast. First, remember the colors you saw in your reference images and find blocks that match those colors. More important, however, is contrast. This means having blocks that have contrasting colors, which can make your build more interesting and less bland. For example, here are the two contrasting colors of the light gray of the stone and the dark brown, which is actually orange, of the spruce wood. Now, it can also be useful, once you have these colors, to make similar colors. It can be especially useful to take a darker or lighter version of a color and add that too. For example, here we can see a color palette for a castle. The main contrast is between the darker blue of the copper and the lighter tan of the sandstone. However, birch wood is used as a slightly lighter highlight. Also, moss is used to complement the copper, and the spruce wood serves as a semi-contrast that can bring out the details in the sandstone. Also, note that it said color, not blocks. The reason for that is that it can be useful to use texturing to make builds look less monotonous. I have done a previous video on this, and it will be linked up here and in the description. Here, I use the stone bricks to complement the cobblestone and break it up. Also, I use the lighter wood as a semi-contrast to the spruce wood, like what we saw with the castle. With this done, you should now have a style and color palette picked out, so it's time to move on to step two. The next thing to plan is an outline. When doing this, the best strategy is usually to just use basic shapes and put them together. Also, it is important to consider the entire build when doing this. Simply put, you should start to envision where certain parts of the build should go. This building here is quite simple, and it is just two rectangles. However, with more complicated buildings, especially castles, it can be important to first think about roof lines, turrets, and the locations of different halls. For example, you might want to consider where a main hall might go, and how two sections will intersect. Also, there is much you can do with towers. They can be circular, four-sided, or eight-sided. However, with a simple build, like this one, it can be useful to just start with one shape, like a rectangle. Make this the largest shape, and it should constitute the majority of the structure. Then, add on smaller shapes and sections. You could add a tower on a corner, like we can see in this build, or just add another extension, like in this build. However, the important thing is just to create the outline of a simple shape, plan out the overall structure, and to create a main section and build out. Also, you can use various aesthetic principles in designing this. For example, this build actually follows the golden ratio. The ratio of the sides is roughly 1.618 to 1, which is also known as the golden ratio. If you want me to make a video about ratios, color theory, or another part of building you have trouble with, feel free to leave a comment with something you struggle with. Finally, while using these aesthetic principles or ratio can be useful, it is usually just best to go with what looks good. The next step is to start to block out the structure of the build. Whenever you are working on any structure, even a painting or sculpture, it is best to first start with a rough shape, then refine it from there. If you have already thought about how your structure will look, you can start blocking it out now. In this case, I knew that I wanted this house to have a larger part here and a smaller part here. So, I will build up some rectangles to create the structure of the build. However, if you do not know how you want it to work, you follow the same strategy you use when creating the outline. In general, you can assume that each shape of the structure is a certain part of the building. Thus, take the largest parts and build them first, then block out the smaller parts the way you did with the outline. In this case, I would first create this part of the build, then the smaller addition. After you have the general shape blocked out, it's time to create the roofs. Generally, the roof height should be proportional to the width of the structure that it is over. In other words, if this part of the build was twice as wide as this part, then the roof should be twice the size as well. However, you should also consider a few general stylistic choices of the build, especially with the roof. When doing this, you should consider the style and references you created in step 1. With this build, I will make the roof at a 45 degree angle, which will be by far the most common. However, if another style of roof is better suited to the overall build, then you should use that. There are a wide variety of different roof shapes and angles you can use in your builds. However, there are a few general tips for roofs. First, always include an overhang. 
In this build, I will overhang it by one block on every side. On larger builds or those with a more prominent roof, this should be larger. Also, make sure to build roofs, not pyramids. In general, roofs have a line going one way, as you can see here. While you can use four-sided roofs in some circumstances, it is generally better to use roofs with just one side. Don't worry about creating details, you're just blocking out the overall structure of your build. The fourth step of building is to decorate the structure you have created with elements that match the chosen theme or atmosphere. In this case, it's often beneficial to look back at your references. For example, if you are building a castle, you might look back at a reference image of a medieval window decoration. In this sense, you can aim to replicate the exact details of your reference. This allows you to use the details exactly as they would have appeared on the structures your creations are based on. However, this has a few key limitations. If, for example, you are building anything that is not based on something in real life, this will limit you. However, you can still take inspiration from reference images and styles that have much in common with the one you're using. However, the best way, and most important to learn, is to be able to create details by yourself simply with a particular theme in mind. That's what I'm doing here. While this build is of a style that exists in real life, I am creating them myself for demonstration purposes. First, when laying out your color palette, you should have a designated color for detail. As was aforementioned, this should contrast decently with the rest of the build. Here, I'm using spruce wood as it contrasts with lighter oak used in other places in the build. Next, I want it to have a slightly modern look, so we'll use the planks, not the logs. Finally, I want it to look more detailed as opposed to too rustic or spartan. Thus, I will use a few decorative embellishments here and there. Also, I want larger windows, so I'm putting them in more prominent places as one would see in a more modern cabin. There are also a few places where details should generally go. It's good to have something of interest around the windows, in large empty spaces, and around the edges of a structure. Here, we add a depth with these wooded bars that protrude, and I added details between them. Also, it is good to have something under the roof and other prominent ledges or overhangs. Now, I have made a separate video specifically about detailing, so this is just a shortened version. Also, if you want to get recommended future videos on similar topics and support this channel, please do consider subscribing. Next comes the fifth and final step. In many cases, what you have now would generally be considered a finished build. It has depth, detail, and a multitude of different shapes and colors. In many aspects, it would be considered finished. However, it is missing one crucial thing, terraforming. When creating any build, it is integral to also shape the landscape around it. You can add just a few minor details or create the whole landscape around it. When doing either, first try to think about two things, the atmosphere and setting. Terraforming accomplishes three things. It creates the setting for the build, has depth and atmosphere, and tells the story of what has happened to a build. Terraforming is something that can get very complicated quickly, so I have made a separate video about it, which will be linked at the end of this one. However, we can just go over the basics. First, review your earlier references or inspiration and take note of its surroundings. For example, a build might be in a city, a forest, or on the side of a mountain. Try and take careful note of this and bear it in mind when you start terraforming. Other thing to consider is the atmosphere. As I previously said, I want a more secluded cabin in the woods feel. So, I'll put it in a small clearing in the forest. I might also add a small stream next to it to add interest. Also, I want to tell the story of a build. So, I'll add a small dirt drive up to the house, and a small path from the door past the stream and into the woods. Thus, it will make it seem as if the people who live there frequently go outside into the forest. When I'm creating the terrain, I'm also trying to keep it simple. I'm adding a small rock outcrop and waterfall to the stream to add interest and variation. Other than that, it is relatively uniform. Also, note that I'm using a color gradient of sorts, but for the vegetation. I have certain colors for the ground, certain colors for the trees, and certain colors for the rocks. Finally, I have just added a few small rocks and plants to add interest. Also note that some of the bushes grow up against the house and surroundings, tying them in nicely. Overall, while this final step may seem trivial, it can be one of the things that differentiates a good build from a great one. The landscape around a build is just as important as the build itself. Make sure to give it its due notice. Finally, you obviously don't need this much landscaping, but I did it just for this demonstration. Also, if you want to learn more about terraforming, especially how to make trees and plants, watch this video here.